Okay, so here we are, going to show you guys how to properly clock a turbo for installation. Uh, first step is going to be a kind of tour in the turbo, uh, let you know what's what. That right there would be considered the compressor wheel, and that is also considered the compressor inlet. Over here is the outlet of the compressor. That would be where the first pipe heading towards the throttle body or the intercooler would go. This is the vacuum line going over to the wastegate actuator. This is the actuator with the spring, sets the boost pressure. That's the rod that goes down to the flapper. I'm going to flip the turbo over so you can see it there. That's the flapper there. Uh, what that does is open to vent the exhaust around the turbine so that you can control the boost level. And that is also considered the turbine outlet. And that would be the turbine inlet, essentially where you connect it to the manifold. Okay, now the next part that you need to know about is the oil inlet and outlet and the water lines and what's considered the center section of the turbo, the CHRA. Uh, here we have the water ports. Those are typically side to side, one on each side of the center section. And then you'll see on the bottom with the little red plastic cap in it, that would be the turbo drain. And you can see the diamond shaped flange would bolt to that and then you're fitting to the flange to drain the, turb uh, drain the oil back to the motor. And as you flip the turbo around 180 degrees, you'll see a threaded piece. Uh, that is where the the oil inlet or the oil feed line would go. Uh, most turbos use a dash 3 or dash 4 line so the fitting would have to be a dash 3 or dash 4 for that. Okay the tools needed for uh, the, the BLF billet T28 turbo are going to be a 13 millimeter, a 10 millimeter and a flathead screwdriver. Now the first step we're gonna do a clocking as if we were clocking it for one of the 1ZZ 2ZZ kits uh, the first step is going to be to remove the actuator to allow the turbo to freely spin in any direction to get it properly lined. Uh, first step in that is to remove the C-clip. Put your hand over it that way when you pull it off it doesn't go flying across the room and, and you lose it. Uh, definitely seen that happen a couple thousand times. Next step is to, with the eyelet still on the flapper, you want to loosen that nut that's going to allow you to uh, remove the arm extension. So you'll pop it off of the uh, flapper. And there's a little bit of tension on there, so don't hesitate to give it a little tug. And then you're going to unscrew that. Unscrew the eyelet. That's going to pull it right off. And there you go. Flapper disconnected, eyelet arm off, and the next step is going to be to remove the actuator. Okay, so using the 10 millimeter wrench, you're going to loosen up the two nuts on the bottom of the wastegate actuator. This is going to allow you to completely remove the actuator from the bracket. We suggest doing this for two reasons. Uh, it gets out of the way as you're trying to run and clock everything else and it just makes the job a lot easier while you're on the bench to have everything out of the way. I guess that's really one reason. Obviously save all the hardware in a safe place. You will need to reuse everything. And the last thing you want to do is get to the point of putting the turbo on the car and realize you are missing something. Okay, so that is now out of the way. Uh, the next step is going to be to flip the turbo up on the compressor housing and loosen the six bolts on the compressor housing. It's always easier to do the compressor housing first. Uh, the soft aluminum of the compressor housing causes the bolts to have kind of a rubber effect on them when they tighten in like that. And uh, if you have the exhaust housing loose and you try to grab it for leverage, the exhaust housing spins and it starts getting annoying, <laughs> to say the least.
And again, you're not removing any of these. You're just loosening them so they're about hand loose or finger loose. Uh, that way you can rotate the compressor housing. And you'll see after they're loose, the compressor housing will rotate on the assembly. This allows you to now clock the compressor housing into the proper uh, orientation. The next step is going to be to flip the turbo over onto the exhaust housing and loosen up the four bolts holding the exhaust housing in place. Again, just like on the compressor, you're only going to loosen these to where the, the housing will rotate. Uh, you're not really worried about loosening these and taking them out completely. You're just loosening them to about finger tight so that way we can rotate all the housings into the proper position. At this point, both, all three parts, the compressor housing, the center section, which would be considered the bearing housing, and the compressor housing will all rotate independently. Uh, once you get to this position, uh, you want to line up the turbo, uh, sorry, line up the turbine inlet with where it's going to be mounted on the manifold and where the 12 o'clock position is going to be is where you want to rotate the center section around for oil inlet. Alright, the next step is going to be to clocking the center section or the bearing housing uh, into the proper position for the oil feed and oil drain lines. In this application, the turbo, the turbine inlet connects to the manifold at about the 12 o'clock position. So at the same position, you're going to want the oil feed line to go in at 12 o'clock and the oil drain to be at 6 o'clock or as close to that as possible. You have about 15, 15 or so degrees on either direction that you can do it. As you can see here, we position the turbine inlet to about where it's going to attach to the manifold as a reference for clocking the center section. So now that we have that in position, we're going to take the bearing housing, the center housing, and rotate the oil feed around the top so it's positioned at about the 12 o'clock mark. And again, you have about 15 degrees or so to play with. So if you find you're getting too, too close to the exhaust housing, to where the fitting is going to hit the exhaust housing, you can move it back a tiny bit. Alright, so as you can see, this is in the proper position. Uh, we have the oil feed at the top. We have the water side to side. And then we have the drain at the bottom. Basically at 12 o'clock, 3 and 6 o'clock or sorry, 3 and 9 o'clock, and then 6 o'clock for the drain. In this position, the exhaust housing and the center section is in the proper position. So what we suggest is cranking down or locking down one of the bolts on the exhaust housing, one of the four bolts, and what that will do is that will stop the exhaust housing and the center section from spinning independent from each other, essentially locking it into the proper position to be mounted on the vehicle. So as you can see now, the exhaust housing is locked to the center section. They will move together, and the compressor housing will move separately. This will keep it locked into the proper position, so that way we can rotate the compressor housing over to the proper position as well and reconnect the actuator and adjust it for proper boost. In this application, the compressor outlet needs to be pointing up at about the 11 o'clock mark, between 10 and 12 and uh, once you have that position properly, again, lock down or tighten in one of the six bolts. And what that's going to do is lock it into the proper position so that you can reattach the actuator. And just a, a good tip here, do not lock down one of the bolts on the actuator bracket. Uh, in this application, we do have to uh, flip the bracket around and add an extension on the uh, actuator arm. Uh, so if you were to tighten that, you're going to have to loosen it up to flip it anyways. So always tighten one of the ones away from the bracket. So here you can see everything is locked into place. The compressor is pointing in the proper direction for the first intercooler pipe. The exhaust housing is at the proper angle to connect to the manifold. And the center bearing section is proper for the oil feed drain and the water lines. 
The next step is to flip the turbo onto the compressor housing so that we can adjust the actuator bracket properly and connect it back to the actuator, uh, back to the wastegate flapper. Okay, so first step here is to grab the uh, turbo and flip it over onto the compressor housing. As you can see here, the actuator bracket and the flapper do not line up. So what the next step is, is to remove the two bolts on top of the actuator bracket and that's going to allow us to flip it 180 degrees to bring it back into line with the flapper. And a little hint here, you can see one of the innovations of the BLF Billet T28 Turbo is we have had six holes added to the actuator bracket. This allows for pretty much uh, as many different options as you need to, lo to uh, clock the not only the turbo in the bracket but as well as the actuator so that the vacuum lines are putting in the right place for your application. Let's say you have it in a tight manifold situation and the way it mounts to the turbo is putting the vacuum line right into the manifold which obviously would melt the vacuum line. Uh, take the actuator off, flip it 180 degrees or rotate it to any one of those six holes to move the vacuum line away to the proper position. Okay, so as you can see now, we are back in. What are you doing? Oh, sorry. So as you can see now, we are back in line. You can see where the hole is going to be for the actuator, and it's going to line up just about to the actuator, uh, the wastegate flapper. Okay, the next step is going to be to reinstall the actuator and the extension arm that comes with the kit that we're clocking the turbo for. This is our uh, Celica GT GTS uh, 1ZZ 2ZZ kit. So first step is to flip the turbo on its side, or from its side to its side, I guess, and uh, reinstall the actuator. So that, again, as I was saying on the six holes, so that the vacuum line lines up the way you need it to. Install the bolts and washers, nuts and washers. And you are going to want to tighten these down now. Uh, because when you uh, connect the arm to the wastegate flapper, you want to make sure there is no pre-tension. Uh, pre-tension will cause a spike and boost and not enough tension. Uh, basically, the flapper being left cracked open is going to cause exhaust to vent around and you not get enough boost. So uh, it's very crucial that you get the tension proper when you connect that flapper. And we'll show you how to do that as soon as these are tight. Okay, so the next step, and this is very crucial, is setting the tension on the wastegate. Uh, what we like to do is flip the turbo up on the compressor housing. This allows the flapper on the wastegate to essentially sit shut by gravity, which gives you a perfect position for it to be closed without adding any additional tension to it. So what you want to do is take the wastegate actuator arm extender, screwing it onto the wastegate, and they're kind of deep threads, so you know, the first couple threads you want to make sure it's straight as you, as you spin it on. And watch as the eyelet starts to line up with the, act with the wastegate flapper. As soon as the eyelet lines up, and this is with it closed based basically by gravity, so you're not adding any tension or adding any distance to it. As soon as you get that lined up, you will rotate the actuator arm over to it and slip it over and at this point if you find it a little too short you can just loosen it up again the, the trick here is to not add any tension to the wastegate if you add tension to it that can cause a boost spike which obviously can be detrimental to the motor if it spikes too much so once that is in place you can add the c-clamp back and tighten the 10 millimeter nut that's on the arm to lock it into place. And voila! 
wastegate actuator in line, flapper connected, no pretension, flapper closed, not pre cracked. Okay, so there you go. Properly clocked turbo. You can see the exhaust housing in the proper position. Uh, wastegate flapper locked down. You can see the rod on the actuator. No real angles or any tension added to it. Actuator locked in. Vacuum nipple pointing away from everything. And you can see the bearing housing. One second here. Bearing housing is proper. Oil feed on the top. 12 o'clock, water at 3 and 9, and drain at 6 on the bottom. And you can see from the actuator side, I'm sorry, from the compressor side, everything is connected. The vacuum line is going away from the manifold. Uh, the compressor housing is clocked in a proper position for the first intercooler pipe. And this baby's ready to go on the car. One trick we suggest is not tightening down the six bolts on the compressor and the four bolts on the exhaust housing. Just tighten one of them. What this will do is this will lock it in position where it will not move. But when you get it into the car, all you got to do is loosen one of the bolts. And it will allow you for that final, final adjustment to make sure that everything is 100% while it is in the car. Because again, you can only get so close on the table. When you get it in the car, you're going to want to get everything... Uh, you know, the last minute kind of uh, adjustments to make sure it fits 100%. So I hope this has helped you guys. If anyone has any questions, feel free to post or email or call, and uh, we'll be more than happy to help you. Thank you.